Hi there. Today, challenge yourself with a fun quiz to test your understanding of the use of 20 homophones in English. Have you ever found yourself puzzled by words in English that sound exactly alike, but which have different meanings and spellings? If so, you're not alone. Today, let's do some more work on homophones, those tricky words that catch out even the most diligent English language learners. Homophones are tricky because they sound the same but are spelt differently and their meaning is completely different. Let me talk about some pairs of homophones and then if you stay until the end of the podcast, we'll do a fun quiz. You can check your understanding and whether you know the correct spelling of some very common homophones. I'm going with ones you might find easier today because they're so common, you've probably met them and you probably know them. But if you don't, they're essential. And the quiz, always good to test yourself. And if you don't do well at the test, don't worry, you'll be learning a lot. And if you do well at the test, then be pleased, pat yourself on the back. Your English language learning is going well and it feels nice to get everything right. Hello, I'm Hilary and you're listening to Adept English. We will help you to speak English fluently. All you have to do is listen. So start listening now and find out how it works. Before we leap into homophones, a quick tip. If you're finding some English lessons tough to grasp, difficult that means, and you want to raise your level of English quickly, our most common 500 words course is what you need. It's actually got 600 most common words in it now, a bonus just for you. You can find the most common 500 words course on our website, adeptenglish.com, on the courses page. Let's have a look at what homophones are again and then at 20 common homophones in English. Then the quiz. You'll know some of these already. I've made it nice and easy today. So you'll know K N O W. The difference between me replying in the negative, no, that's N-O, and the verb to know, K-N-O-W. Very different spelling, very different meaning, but that's probably the most common example in English of a homophone. So homophones, H-O-M-O-P-H-O-N-E-S, they sound exactly the same. So homo means the same and phone means sound. So you're probably familiar with the difference between N-O and K-N-O-W. So let's move on. Another set of homophones you probably know well, right and right. That's R-I-G-H-T and W-R-I-T-E. And if you've ever spent time in the UK, you'll find that right, W-R-I-G-H-T, is a very common surname. But let's not mix that one in. Here, the verb to write, W-R-I-T-E, may mean holding a pen and putting words onto a sheet of paper. But more often these days, we write something on a computer. So we put words together. That's the verb to write. I have written this podcast and now I'm recording it. But the word write, R-I-G-H-T, means all kinds of things. It could describe which side, your right hand or your left hand. Most commonly, it means to have reason on your side, to be correct. We'd say you're right or that was the right decision. So completely different meanings, but right and right sound the same. What about C and C? One is a verb that refers to what you do with your eyes. If you use your eyes purposefully, you're looking. But if you're just going around with your eyes open and you notice things, then you are seeing. So that one is the verb to see, S double E. But if we talk about the sea, that's S E A, here we're talking about the ocean. You know this already, right? And don't confuse it with the name for the letter C, will you? Another very common pair of words, which are homophones, blue, B L U E and blue, B-L-E-W. So blue, B-L-U-E, is a colour. 
the colour of the sky sometimes and sometimes the colour of the sea. And it's some people's eye colour too. Whereas the word blue, B-L-E-W, is the past tense form of the verb to blow. You might blow on your food because it's too hot and you want to eat it. Or, as happened in the UK last week, the wind blew. Or you might say she blew out the candles on her birthday cake. What about one and one? Almost the same. One, O-N-E, means a single instance of something. One person, one tree, one country. It's a number and it can be used as a pronoun, possibly by posh people instead of I. But one, W-O-N, some people would say one, one is again a past tensed form of the verb to win. As in, he won the election. That's referencing my topic in the Monday podcast this week. So we're at 10 homophones so far. Some more? Another set of homophones that are very common, whole, H-O-L-E, and whole, W-H-O-L-E. If you have a hole in your sock, your toe may be poking through. Or a hole in the ground might be where a rabbit or a fox lives. But if you hear the word hole, W-H-O-L-E, this can be a noun, we say the whole of it, or an adjective, the whole apple, then this word means all of it, the whole thing. A very different meaning from the word whole, H-O-L-E, which is what's missing. Let's go back to a really simple one that I'm sure you'll know. What about here? H-E-A-R and here, H-E-R-E. Well, the first one is again the verb to hear. And you can remember this spelling because it's like the word ear, E-A-R. So to hear is what you do with your ears. And like the difference between to see and to look, to hear isn't intentional, whereas to listen means hearing on purpose. And the word hear H-E-R-E is a kind of noun, a kind of adverb. We use it to mean the place that we're in, here. And here, for me, could mean in the UK or at my house or here on the sofa. And another set of homophones that you probably know, through, T-H-R-O-U-G-H and through, T-H-R-E-W. So, through. T-H-R-O-U-G-H is a preposition. If you go through a tunnel, you pass into the tunnel along and out the other side of the tunnel. That's through. Whereas through, T-H-R-E-W, is the past tense of the verb to throw. You might throw a football from the side of the pitch to restart the game. Or you might throw a tantrum. We use it in different ways. But to throw is a very commonly used verb. And through is its past tense and through is a very commonly used preposition. What about bear and bear? Very different meanings. Bear, B-E-A-R, is both a noun and a verb. In its noun form, it's an animal. A big furry animal which roams in places like Canada. An animal to be frightened of too, a bear. But we do also have our teddy bears. If bear, B-E-A-R, is used as a verb, this word means to carry or to put up with, to suffer. People sometimes say in English, I can't bear it, which means I can't put up with it, I can't suffer it. Whereas bear, B-A-R-E, means with no covering or sometimes with no clothes on. So again, very different meanings. The last two common homophones for today, what about great, G-R-E-A-T and great, G-R-A-T-E? Well, I think you know the first one, great. G-R-E-A-T is commonly used as an adjective meaning good, to be admired or large. I might say, this is a great podcast. The other great, G-R-A-T-E, still quite common. As a noun, it's used to mean an object, usually metal with holes in it. 
So a grate might be the metal thing that you burn fuel in in your home if you have a fireplace. And also to grate is a verb, G-R-A-T-E. If you're making pizza, you'll probably grate cheese to put on the top. So to grate, G-R-A-T-E, means to use a metal grater to make small pieces of something. Here, cheese or it could be carrot. That's 20 homophones. That's enough homophones for now. Let's test how well you know these with a quiz. Here are 10 sentences and the pairs of homophones I've talked about appear in the sentences. You need to choose which spelling is correct for each one. The answers are in the transcript on the website at adeptenglish.com. I'll say each of these sentences twice. You try to write down the correct homophone, the correct spelling of each one. Here goes. Number one, he threw a ball through the window. He threw a ball through the window. Number two. I cannot bear to see his bare bottom. I cannot bear to see his bare bottom. Number three. In here, in this room, I can't hear the music. In here, in this room, I can't hear the music. Number four. No, I don't know his name. No. I don't know his name. Number five. There was a great fire lit in the grate. There was a great fire lit in the grate. Number six. This one boy won all his tennis matches with a resounding success. This one boy won all his tennis matches with a resounding success. Number seven. The whole tent is full of holes and the rain is coming in. The whole tent is full of holes and the rain is coming in. Number eight. It's not right that she hasn't learned to read and write. It's not right that she hasn't learned to read and write. Number nine. The wind blew even harder as a blue kite went flying past. The wind blew even harder as a blue kite went flying past. Number ten. Can you see the sea over there beyond the sand dunes? Can you see the sea over there beyond the sand dunes? OK, that's all of them. How did you do? Let me know if that was super, super easy or if it was difficult. It's helpful for us at Adept English to understand your level of English. And we also realise that our listeners have a broad range of levels. It's fun to do a quiz and get it all right. And it's great to do a quiz when you don't get all the answers right because you're learning something. Let us know if you want more homophones. Enough for now. Have a lovely day. Speak to you again soon. Goodbye. Thank you so much for listening. Please help me tell others about this podcast by reviewing or rating it. And please share it on social media. You can find more listening lessons and a free English course at adeptenglish.com.